Ready? Yeah. Get set. It's a superhero hub on the internet. Uh, oh, God. oh my God. I'm Sam. <laughs> I'm Matt. And today we're going to be reviewing. Iron Fist. Yep. Episode six. This episode is called Immortal Emerges from Cave. So, I mean, they've given up on the bookie titles and they're keeping it real. Well, kind of. It's, it's dramatic. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Let's move on. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> This was a the, the, there are bits of this episode that I found amusing. The first point I like to hear bits as well. Yeah, you go. I mean, you got what you wanted fighting, but I mean, at, at the first bit of the episode, it's funny because obviously Ward's obviously coming down from whatever he was doing last episode. And like is in the office and Joy comes in and she's beefing and is like he's like, Look, it ain't a problem, it ain't a problem and then he's like he picks up the bin and then he's rifling through his drawers and he's like, It ain't a problem, it ain't a problem. Shaking one, it's not a problem, pulls out like four pill pots and puts them in the bin and is saying it ain't a problem. I was like, I was expecting one but four. He kept pulling them out. I was like, Yeah, it ain't a problem. So I thought that was great. Um I thought it was interesting as well. Because obviously um, Dan, Dan is talking to him. They first come out and is talking to him about um, whatever the the van, and they've got to go through the warehouses and find this girl. So he goes with them, and then they get in the Aston Martin. There was a bit of camaraderie between them. They were kind of like you know getting on for a moment there in the car. And I was thinking, you want to know what? That's cool. The guy's kind of mellowed a bit. I was thinking because when he ain't being a baghead, he's kind of all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think you can, we can say through now, the conceit is his dad is the bad guy and he's just pushing it on him. Yeah, I think he's under a lot of stress and it's not necessarily from running the company because I guess he can do it okay, but once he's got but that... But he, does, he doesn't run the company, does he? Well, well, he does what he does, you feel me? I, yeah, I get that he's a CEO and he does some things, but inherently he doesn't run the entire thing but yeah he can I think whatever his role is he seems to be able to do it competently enough I think predominantly it's like a member of the board alongside with Joy I think they're both like major, uh, shareholders in some respects so they're definitely members of the board yeah Whether... they are and I, I think he's officially like CEO or something he's he's officially in charge of the company because his dad's dead so he's the head honcho and I guess his sister is like a step below yeah uh, executive vice president or whatever so yeah but I mean the kind of theme with him was obviously like my man's tweaking for the episode he has a meeting with some guy I don't really know the substance of that really I think that was just him kind of whatever and then he freaks out in the meeting dashes out and then obviously it becomes apparent that he has obviously got a substance abuse problem he's tweaking out he ends up breaking his hand I mean credit where credit's due whatever makeup was on my man's hand when he goes into the um goes into the like pharmacy or whatever you, you know and his hands all like puffy and it's like ah, oh, that looks messed up you know what i mean real realistic because i'll pop my hand out before and i've had the dirty great like purple lump and stuff like that and your hand goes all freaky and it's like all shaking and melting and sweaty and his hair's all over the place so i mean he did that really well but i mean obviously it's interesting and getting away from that because obviously uh Dan is kind of trying to find this girl. I mean, he goes with Ward to the warehouse and, like, they open up the van and there's, like, the headless guy in there and then he's, like, melting. And then it's like, oh, we can't report this to police because, obviously, it's going to be bad for the company. So, I mean, predominantly, the episode's kind of about um, Danny fa having his first little face-off with the hand, you know what I mean? He, he gets the invitation out of the thing's mouth. And then there's a really, like, funny kind of... He gets to the place wherever it is and like it, it, uh, Madame Gal comes out it's interesting because she's kind of like that. there's a respect towards her you know what I mean because they're obviously going through the thing they're doing that they're bowing and stuff and it's like interesting as well because when Daredevil kind of came up against her and stuff like that he was kind of buddy buddy with her as well you know what I mean so she's kind of, she's kind of an interesting character as it were because generally there isn't really yeah she's the bad guy and stuff but like Daredevil wasn't really fronting against her and neither, neither was he and it's interesting as well that she mentioned she has a master as well so it's kind of they've always kind of 
I mean, in this series at least, kind of, she, she's been the one calling the shots, as it were, even from the shadows. But it turns out that she's got a master as well. So I mean, yeah, like, and and do you imagine she would do, wouldn't you? I mean, eventually it's got to come down to a fight, isn't it? Yeah. And you know, she's cool, she's badass and whatnot, but she's a little old lady. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why it's interesting because they don't really. There's not really uh, that that much hostility towards her. Yeah, she's like you know part of the hand and stuff like that but you, you're you not going to expect them to start beating on the old lady not that she can't hold her own apparently as we find out later on in the episode so I mean they're doing the hand washing which was kind of really weird and then he faces off um, three tests so, oh, yeah, so it, it sort of turns into like like game of death kind of kung fu movie where you go through the levels like a computer game or something it's interesting they're like fight to the death but no one gets killed you know what I mean? Fight to the death, but uh, if you tap out, that counts as well. So obviously, this is a bit your your hot on. Well, yeah, I mean, I won't go that far, but it is what I've been waiting for. Finally, some action. You know, I'm. He still doesn't use the Iron Fist enough for me. Like it, he could win in a second if you just actually use it to beat people up. But instead, he use it more as like a defensive weapon. But yeah, we finally got into some action. I liked it. I thought I thought most of the fights were pretty good. Um, the the one thing though his the dialogue let's sit down again yeah is that crap like, he's sprouting out you guys trained in the same playground <laughs> yeah, oh my god and it, not only is it that he's saying this crap it's that like, I, like I've been saying before I don't want to sound like a broken record but it's just it's so earnest like it's so deadly serious and it's so stupid but it just makes it seem terrible. It's interesting as well because I um, that there's a lot of mentions of Kung Lun, Kung Lun, yeah, or Kung whatever. Lun. Kung Lun, yeah, yeah, uh, and like they're saying about how he's the Iron Fist. Shouldn't he be guard, guard, being a guard of the gates or whatever? What you do, what you doing over here? You know what I mean? So I think I don't really know, like. It's interesting. W- w- because that question hasn't really been fully answered yet. Why? Why you chose to leave Kung Lun? So like, if you're Iron Fist, mate, you're meant to be guarding the gates, and it's like, why are you here? And that question was kind of brought up quite a few times in this episode. Um, in terms of the fighting, I thought, yeah, it was okay because it was faster paced, but it's still restrictive. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, fight these two guys, but it's like you've got to stay in this ring. You know what I mean? So I kind of felt it restrictive. Um, I do think eventually he's going to come up against 20 people, you know what I mean? And then he can just like power through them. But when it's yeah. like two people, they are kind of going to drag it out. I think... And that's what, that, that's what I'm waiting for. You know what I mean? I think that's what we've all been waiting for. It already happened at this point in Daredevil. If he, come, if he comes up, like, I think it's because the majority of these opponents are just like normal guys, you know what I mean? If he comes up against something big where it's like one smack from the Iron Fist ain't going to knock him out, then, then he's going to be pulling out the Iron Fist and doing all this funky stuff no. and it's going to look sick. But at the moment, he's just coming up against like henchmen and it's like not really that much of a test, to be I honest. Like how, I like how they try to differentiate things. I like how the second level was a woman. Much more seductive. It. I did like it. It did feel like kind of. I suppose the term would be comic booky. Like like I mean she wasn't super powered, but it could be that way. I can imagine that being a scene of like the Power Rangers or something with this woman with some mystical powers. You know, it turns out it's Venom or Spider Venom or whatnot. But I mean, at least it's a change. At least it's something. At least we're moving somewhere now. Yeah, they mixed it up a bit because yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like physical with the two guys. That's kind of like mental. And then in the third test, it kind of come comes down to honor because I mean, he's got flipping. I guess Lee Kung in his ear, like yamming oh. his ear off every five oh, minutes. Oh God! And then it's like, and then it's like telling him, "Oh yeah," because I think. That that guy all is bothered about is Kung Lun and destroying the hand, and I mean that's their thing, you know what I mean. So everyone else, is, everything else is superfluous. So I can see whether he was like, "Yo, deal with the hand guy," uh, as opposed to and let the girl die. Um, but it's interesting the kind of thing as well. It's like it w- was 
if that wasn't on the table, if the girl wasn't up to knife point, would he have like finished that guy as in punched him in the head and popped his head off with the no. iron fist? Because they ain't killed no one yet, and I think no, there's kind gonna. of they keep avoiding the issue. Yeah, I don't think he's going to kill anyone either. Uh, but that that stuff, I mean, again, I want to stress, I I I, this is probably my favourite episode so far of the show. Maybe because we finally got what I wanted, but. There are still glaring thing. The thing with his master, that was weird. It's a monk yeah. stood there, telling him and banging out the stuff and oh he's in the heaven and I'm from heaven and blah 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 and all this crap and you know if we've seen we've seen that kind of thing in shows before and it's what you know uh, Dexter would Dexter would talk to Harry who is his dad but also basically a version of him in his head that worked fine I could accept that. But when it's some a, a monk, no, no. You, you don't. You don't see the ninjas doing that. You don't see no. the other side doing that. It's, he's talking to himself, man, and like. Another bit that annoyed me as well, talking of kind of talking to himself, is when like he's in the dojo and he's talking to himself, and then like the the master's just about to say, oh, that that there's another like shadowy opponent or whatever, and it's just he's like who just about to say it and then clears like who are you talking to? I was like nah, shut up. As if they kind of ruined that. She's oh. she, she she's kind of annoying. I mean. The kind of other half of the thing was obviously her running around with Colleen, uh, sorting out the Russian guy, and obviously there's not really much to that. She batted him. I thought it was sick, um, pretty good in the hospital when she fought that one guy in white, and she kind of dropped him, spun around, clicked his hand, and then like stamped on his face, yep, like knockout. Cool. That was sick. Um, so yeah, they've got away with the Russian guy, whatever. And I mean. Um, getting back onto Danny, he saved the daughter, obviously he was tasked with uh, um, being dishonourable and giving up the, uh, rescinding the challenge and saving the girl, or one bombing my man in the head and the girl getting killed as well. So is that is that girl the daughter of the guy? Yeah, the Russian guy. Okay. So he kind of got it into his head, he's going to save her, even though it means nothing to him, whatever. Well, um, and they walk out like arm in arm, as if they're like husband and wife or something. I mean, I get. I mean, maybe she's been for a traumatic time. I guess I'm being harsh. Yeah, so yeah, he stays there and gets out. Yeah, and also like uh, Madame Gao's talking about how she went to Kung Lun, and then she like uh-huh. telekinesis blasts him across the room. It's like not having any of that rubbish. Um, so yeah, she's got powers as well. Oh yeah, did we know that before? Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. I mean, I think that was pretty like indifferent. I think I'd remember if I'd seen that before, because really she's only really featured in Daredevil and Shapes pulled that out. So not such an old, uh, frail old woman after all. I mean, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much in the end of the episode, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let's talk numbers. Clearly, you liked it. Yeah, seven. Is My highest score so far. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I'll give it solid seven as well. It's creeping, it's getting there. Um, it's a sign of things to come. Action, obviously, that's the sixth episode. This is kind of where it's supposed to kick up a gear now, so it's going to be better onwards. Um, I mean, this kind of incline, yeah, it got off to a slow start, a real slow start, but I mean, it's not terrible by any means. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, no, it's not terrible. I, I wouldn't say it's terrible. It's I average. Wouldn't say it's, yeah, I wouldn't say it's good either. Yeah, neither here nor there. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm hoping. I'm hoping this is a sign of things to come. Yeah. Um. I mean, for now, I mean, you got to look at it like whether they're gonna go and get the Russian guy from the hand I mean it, it it'd be kind of I mean he's just left the hand is he gonna go after him again. I mean, or is something else going to pop up? I mean, really, I mean, the Steel Serpent ain't showed his face yet, so I mean... Right, because he was mentioning that he's in, as Lady Gal kind of pointed out, he must be in New York for another reason. Because that, that's, you know, that's basically what I was losing my rag a bit about earlier in the, in the season, was why is he suddenly showing up now? Why getting the money? But... It, Madam Gao and he himself seems to hint he was there for another reason. So is that what we're going to move into now? Yeah. Hopefully, um, it was better. Mm-hmm. I agree with you on that one. Uh, I think they can, the the action's going to get better. 
Yeah, I, I think for, for, from kind of what, what's been kind of hinting at in trailers and stuff, there's going to be some big moments. I mean, I mean, it's just a real slow kind of grind to get there. So yeah, because we're at a point. It's it's clear that the dialogue. You know, we're back. We're basically halfway through the show now. So the dialogue is clearly not going to get better. So hopefully, ramping up the action means we can at least enjoy that side of it. Yeah, definitely. So that is our review of the sixth episode of Iron Fist. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And this has been the Superhero Hub. See you in the next episode.